Imagine you're fleeing out of a conflictual situation, out of war, and you get sick. And you are in front of a doctor and you don't speak the same language. So how would you feel? started last year in August with the refugee crisis, probably the largest humanitarian crisis since the Second World War, uh, with so many people joining us from so many different countries in such a short time frame. I think as a refugee, you arrive in a country, it's, you know, you arrive at this main station, uh, a lot of people going on, and uh, you have maybe a problem. Your kid is crying, you don't know really what to you want to see a doctor. But one of the main things, obviously, is language. So how can you communicate what is your problem? There were 60,000 refugees in Hamburg in 40 refugee camps. Yes, and so we have had the problem to organize a real good medical treatment for these refugees. The typical situation is that you have 20, 30 refugees queuing in front of the doctor's room. You don't know who's coming, from what country, what kind of language. And you have maybe two, three translators sitting there on the patient's bench. Refugee walks in and then maybe, you know, there's no translator for that language. So one night last uh, summer, I got the call from Mirko and said, oh, there's a refugee crisis, I we have to do something. Uh, what is a big idea? I think I can, we have to do something with our technology. We knew that space for medical consultation was missing. We knew about the language barrier, and we already piloted a project at the university hospital where we used video translators who were able to speak 50 languages just at a press of a button. So the idea was, how can we bring this all together into one solution? And then we thought about something which is very natural to Hamburg, shipping containers. Is it possible to transform a shipping container into a medical station while connecting it with the internet and then having access to these translators? We did an illustration how this could look like. Then we added more ideas. So, okay, we have a box, we have an office for the doctor, we have an office for the nurse, we have storage, then we have Wi-Fi, and then we added uh, the idea of all oh, the translation service, which can be also inside. The next morning I got a call from our um, Central European Vice President saying, hey Mirko, I'm sitting here with my management team, um, we really like your idea, we want to make it happen, what do you need? Now we had to look for the container. We had to look for our team, extend the people in our network. We just kind of reach out in our community and say, here's our purpose, let's put it together, everybody bring in the expertise. I was the technical guy who was able to understand how do we do the backhaul and the mobile wireless and so on. But we have a big, big group of people who help us. And we got so many connections and so many people helping. It was developed by our group. It was our team. We integrated the solution that is uh, needed for the video translator, the wireless LAN for the container, and uh, so we provided connectivity and we provided also the project management. I'm always looking for new eco-partnerships to align Cisco technology with, with healthcare. And actually, I got to know a company who was in charge of video translation with about 700 translators working for them in 50 different languages. There's a surface on a Cisco machine, and you can choose between 50 languages, and uh, each language has a name as it is. You click on one language, and within a couple of seconds, the educated interpreter appears and helps you in the situation. Hello, guten Tag. Wie kann ich Ihnen helfen? Ja, schönen guten Tag. Ich habe hier einen Französisch. That was a high peak of the refugee crisis. So you are working in a chaotic environment, and usually you only work with proven solutions. And what we have proposed was something completely new.
So first of all, we had to source a container. Uh, that took us four weeks just to get a container, and the total production time was from the idea to having it stored. It was six weeks, but four weeks we had to wait for the container. The end result was sort of that we had this empty white container, brought it to our campus, fixed it all up and made all the wires and so on, pulled it from here, brought it to the first location uh, in the west of Hamburg, and uh, so there was this 20-foot container, came almost like a white alien, you know, sitting in this, um, you know, all these other containers were there. And, uh, you know, there was obviously excitement, what is this, this is all new, there are some colors in there. And especially the reaction of the, you know, refugees, the patient was amazing because they said, oh, I can now speak to somebody in my language who also looks looks like me and uh, they can really explain how the situation is. It was just amazing. In my imagination, um, medical care in a refugee camp is supposed to be like bar food medicine. Very rudimental, very, very difficult. And what they presented um, helped me to have the hope that we could do a very, very good medical care here. We have uh, a new world for the doctors. Um, we start uh, with so many languages, uh, we have no uh, translator. Now we can use it uh, by push a button. When the container is coming, we can make the medic service organized um, and it's easier to work. The doctor has the chance to, to uh, look the patient inside the container and not 20 or 40 eyes in the background to look. Mm. And then it got visible. It was in the press, people were talking about it. And then it turned out that a wealthy couple was about to visit the solution because they also wanted to help. It was a very special moment to really observe and really see how the system worked and how the patient then, through the translation system, uh, immediately had a chance to communicate with the interpreter. And we thought this was something where we wanted to help. And my wife and I decided to fund 10 medical containers in the most important and biggest refugee camps in Hamburg. And from that moment where we now have nine of them deployed here, uh, in the different refugee receptions here in Hamburg, the idea was born, um, we should use that momentum. We can do more. I think what is very nice is that these containers are mobile, so it really is an investment also that's sustainable, that uh, can be used around the world also in other areas. We know that there's still crisis in the Middle East, all around Syria. And so our plan is and our vision, can we bring 100 containers closer to the hotspot, into Syria, into um, Turkey, Greece, Lebanon, where help is needed most. There was the power in the team, which was multi-professional, IT experts, um, medical experts. And um, the clue that put us together was the idea and the wish to help, and the wish to, to do something, and to do something new and innovative. There's a good example here in this project, there's this power of connection. We have, one thing is really literally the wires and the hardware and the Wi-Fi and this, but the most important thing is the people, I think. So we have the connection, pitching the idea, then bringing our network in and see if we have the specialists to help us put this on the ground. Now extending the circle and say, ah, do we find supporters to help us grow? What was really surprising for me was to see that, in fact, it was not about business, but my company, Cisco, stepping up and providing the budget to really make it happen, to build the first prototype. You are dealing with big corporations like Cisco, for example, but there are people inside, and people make the difference. And that Cisco was so, you know, um, brave to trust us as a community was really rewarding to see. As young people, we should look at the challenges, but not be overwhelmed by the challenges, but be activated by it. And I think this project shows us, OK, there, there might be challenges in the community, especially with the refugees crisis right now, but it's also an opportunity to help. And it's also an opportunity where we can get active and the outcome will be very, very, very good, I think. I also think a lot of um, ideas just get lost in people's heads because people don't believe that they can change something. And sometimes you just have to try. 
This is such a perfect example where we say, pull in the community, pull in different talents, apply technology for one of the big human challenges. And if we can do something so cool and simple and beautiful, I think everybody can do it. You just have to think a little bit harder and say, well, you know what? In my community, this is my talent, this is what I can do. And this is what humanity is all about. You know, can we bring in our connection, our networks, and see if we can do something even small, but meaningful. The one moment for me to see was where we brought the community together. This cross-pollination of different people, different characters, different expertises, combined with technology in order to make it happen. So if we can have an impact solving humanity's grand challenges, food, health, water, shelter, and so ever, by using technology for a greater good, this is the best thing we can ever do.